Okay, there's 15 people here now. I think that's okay. So um, I'll just start doing the presentation, I guess. So, yep. Today I have a few slides to show you. So I'm just going to present them here. I hope this works correctly, but yeah. I think you guys can see it, right? So I made a slide about web design, and this is class five of eight, I believe. So let me just go to the next slide. So what we have been learning for the past few classes, what we're doing is basically just the programming part of it, right? We're, all we're doing is, um, there's a lot of lag, I'm trying to open the chat, but Probably there lags a lot when doing this. So, yeah. Okay, so basically, my point is like for the few classes we're doing programming, and here I'm just going to review very quickly what we did. So, next slide. It works. Next slide. Okay, yeah, HTML. So the first language that we learn is HTML or what you see on the image on the right right here. And yeah, it basically tells the browser what elements or you can just think of what stuff is on the web page. So as example, there's an H1, which is a big header that says hello. And then right below it, there's a P tag that has a few descriptions and some pieces of text. And then you can, of course, also add um, lists and everything else. It also contains uh, some data about some other parts of the website that you don't see. For example, the title. I mean, the title you do see, but it's not directly inside of the web page. It's on top in the tab bar and places if like you save the website, it will be the title of the website, right? And it also, you can add the style sheet like this with the link tag. So the browser knows that the style sheet exists. There can be a lot more information about, you know, the language of your website, a short description if you want, and a few more stuff that you can put in HTML. But basically, HTML in short is made out of tags, which have content in them, which contain some sort of information that goes on the page or some information that doesn't go on the page. So that's basically a quick summary of what we learned as HTML. The next thing is CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And CSS is basically styling, right? Customizing the website because the by HTML, it doesn't give you any options of deciding how they look except just choosing different stuff, right? It doesn't give you any thing like like you can change. But for CSS, you can do you know you can change the color of different pieces of text, you can change the font size, you can change the spacing, you can change the height, the width, the you can change a lot of stuff. And there's like hundreds of different uh, CSS stuff that I haven't gone into. There is also, yeah, wait. Yep, so to just give you some, like a bit of a breakdown of how this works, basically there are selectors, which is a way of selecting, you know, finding which tags do what things, you know, right, selecting these and applying a style to all of that. And the main thing is, uh, CSS is that you don't need to select the element itself. You just need to select its container element. So all of the things that show up in your web page should be in the body tag in the HTML. So that means if you type the body tag and do a style, it basically applies to everything below it. So this will basically make everything green. And then there's this like, specificity, which means that the more specific uh, selector is, it will make it more you know, it will make it more important. So because everything is green, but the dot hello thing, which is a class that we applied is blue. This is more important than that. And it will override it and stuff with this class will be blue. Same thing with, with like UL, it will also be blue and yellow and etc. So basically these are the programming stuff. Um, to, yeah, we're gonna go to the design quickly, but just to go back to the HTML, another thing that I want to say is how HTML is kind of based on semantics, I guess that's the correct word, which means that it doesn't actually say what 
tags are there, right? It doesn't, no, I mean, it doesn't, the names for the tags don't say what the tags do exactly, but what they're supposed to mean or what they're supposed to be. For example, H1 isn't like, basically makes the text larger and more bold, but it doesn't say large text, right? And P tag doesn't say small text, it says P, which is, I guess, it's a principle or philosophy or guidelines for how tags should be named. They are named by what meaning they can weigh. For example, bold is not called bold, it's called strong because you, what you're actually doing is making that thing, you know, more strong and standing out. So that's why they're called strong instead of bold. This has the advantage of, you know, you can just look at it and see what it does without having to think of what it looks like and then think of what it does. And also if it changes in the future, it's future, it still makes sense. For example, lists, these are actually just bullet lists, but they're called UL for unordered list because they are not in any particular order. If you change it to, you know, OL for order list, it would be numbers like one dot, two dot, three dot instead of the bullet points. So basically, yeah. HTML is dependent on semantics. And now we can basically now, by now you learn almost all there is, or basically the basics of the, how programming languages work and how websites work. And for more complicated websites, you basically just type more code that doesn't necessarily get complicated. So basically you got everything that you really need to know for like web design, yeah. Now, because this course is called web design and for the first four classes, we're just doing programming, we're actually going to do some design because programming is just a tool for making stuff, but not, you had to make, you not only have to know how to make websites, you also need to know how to make websites good and how to, to make them look good and use nicely, I guess. So yeah, this is the design part of the class. So let me just go to the slide. So what you see on the right side here is an uh, image, basically what we're going to do by the end of the class. It's a basic, very simple recipe website for dumplings because I couldn't think of anything else. Um, I guess that we could make pizza, but yeah, dumplings I thought was better. But yeah, so this is a website that we're going to make by the end of the class, hopefully. Now, let me just kind of dissect the layout, I guess. So the top, there's a nav bar from top to bottom, right? There's a nav bar with horizontal with some links like home, about, recipe, shop, contact, everything. Basically just some example items that you can put on the nav bar. And then you can see that the biggest thing is a big image full of dumplings, right? This is spans across the entire page and fits on both sides and acts kind of like a background with this header here. So yeah with a header, which is the title dumplings. And then downwards, we have the main content, which is on this uh, off-white background, or yeah, this like yellowish background with text that has everything in it. Um, we can change the colors later, but basically, yeah, this part is the main content of the web page. And then I also added a small little hovering menu thing that has like contacts. For this example, I just used the mail icon and the Twitter but you can change it to whatever you want. Just It's just like a few small images. But yeah. So let me say, tell you how layouts should be. So most of the time people, when they open a web page, they basically go from the top to bottom. And because this is a web page for just reading, essentially, right, it's a recipe for reading. You're not interacting with anything. It's good to keep it very simple and go from top to bottom. So from the top, there's nav bar, which we're, on most websites, people already know that has the most important navigation information, right? If you want to go somewhere, you want to search something up, it will all be on the nav bar. And yeah, the title, most likely they will see the big title and the image first, and they will see clearly what your, this website is about. And then below that, we have all the content. And yeah, on the side, we have the sidebar, I mean, the menu stuff because or the contact stuff because yeah, this wouldn't be too distracting because people that just want to read the main page won't have to look at the side. Another thing to note is that for this, you can see that I added a huge amount of space to both sides of the page. 
and the reason for that is because when most people read a website, they don't want to move their eyes all the way from this side to that side. They just want to look at it and basically read it. And this, by putting it in the middle, just makes it look a lot and look and read a lot better and easier. It's not like a Google document or any document where you put the text basically from one side to the other side, right? You put stuff in the middle, so it's read, yeah, so it's easier and then you have stuff and you have, and then you have space on the side to put stuff like this. All right, so that's basically the layout of the website that we're going to go over. It. And you know, yeah, this, this is the best I can explain it because design is really subjective, right? It's not like programming where you do this thing and does that thing. Like you want to make it look good, you probably know and just you can tweak stuff however you want. So let's just go on to the next slide, which is colors. So choosing colors don't only just, you don't only choose colors that look cool or something. So you also have to convey meaning. So you have to kind of think of it, think about it a bit more. And also they bring focus to different elements. So if you highlight something, of course, or if you, you know, change something and make it a different color, people's eyes are likely going to look at that first. So color is a very important part of web design and you have to choose it correctly, basically. To give you another example, I have my own website here, right? This is an image. And you can see I have basically four different main colors that I have used. So you can see that comparing these two websites, they have a very different feel because the fonts and colors are different, right? Mine seems a bit more modern and fun, but the recipe website feels a bit more professional. You could say it that way or a bit more I don't know, interesting to look at. But yeah, it's a different style. And for mine, I have the accent color, basically four main colors, accent color, primary color, secondary color, and background color. So I use the accent color, which is a red color, basically on the main background of the header part of the website. And the primary color, right? The primary color is the color that's normally used for text or Basically the headers are primary color, you know, the YouTube video here, for example, and other stuff are, yeah, the primary color of it. And then I have the secondary color, which is, uh, they look very similar, but if you look closely, the primary color is slightly darker and secondary color is used for normal pieces of text, you know, the small text or, you know, in normal cases, this would be the paragraph text which is a secondary color, which is slightly lighter, just to make it a little bit nicer to look at. And you can see that for the primary color, it's not completely black, it's a gray that's actually a little bit blue, just to make it look a bit more interesting. I don't know, having a bit slightly nicer contrast and it doesn't look too boring. And so background color is just, in my case, I just chose a really, really nice pure white, but yeah. Uh, let's see if I have the ability to go back. Yeah, and for this one, you can see that I wanted to make it a little bit more calm, peaceful, something like that, I don't know, right? The background color is a yellowish off white color and this is a dark brown for the ingredients in the text. So yeah, I chose some different color schemes for this. Again, color is very subjective. So you basically have to pick the ones that you think looks good and tweak and, and tinker around a bit, but yeah. So that's the color part. Just to show you a few more examples of big companies using color to represent meaning. And here we have this, right? So, you know, warm colors like McDonald's I've shown uses red and yellow. They look very friendly. And according to some studies, apparently they make it make you seem, feel more hungry or something, but it makes the food, food look better. But cool colors, I feel like feels more professional and clean, right? This is a very oversimplified simplification, but yeah, for example, the IBM logo with the blue and makes it look very, you know, professional and everything. So yeah, these are just a few examples of companies using colors. And just for fun, I try to reverse the colors you know, here and yeah, they don't look good. Right, so you had to pick the colors that match what you want to do. Um, so 
yeah, you can see that colors have a big deal, even though the, yeah, this looks good on McDonald's, it doesn't really look good on the IBM logo and vice versa. So yeah, let's continue to the section, which is fonts. And fonts also help to convey meaning and also bring a focus to different elements. So if you make something in different font or make it the style font, maybe a bit bolder, or a bit larger, it also helps the user and the printer on the, your website read different parts of the website. This is a, again, a very oversimplified thing, but this is just a few examples of the different types of fonts. So with serifs, it's the fonts that have these like bits that are sticking out, right? They have these like pretty complicated uh, like stuff that sticks out. And sans serif, right? Sans basically means without. So without the serifs or without the sticking out parts, it's just a, often a very simple line. And I feel like this is a bit more modern looking. And then there's monospace. And monospace basically means that each letter takes the same amount of space on the screen, right? So each letter is the exact same width. Instead of the serifs, where you can see that the I is definitely um, you know, shorter than the S. So monospace, they take up the same space. But because these fonts are based often used for programming, such as sublime text, by default, it will be a monospace font. It looks kind of computery or futuristic, but yeah, depending on your uses, you can pick different types of fonts. Another thing that you can do is use fonts to, you can mix, mix different fonts together, right? So for example, both of these are uh, sans serif font, but I made this a lot more bold. This is just some example text from the story. It's a, the fonts.google.com, a website for picking fonts. Essentially uses story, but basically you're focusing on the text. And yeah, these are two different text uh, fonts and you can match them up to get a look of what you want. Another example would be this, right? I use a serif font and then I use another different mon uh, sans serif font and you can just pair them up to do different things. So yeah, that's basically the end of the slides. Yep, this time the, it might be a bit boring, but web design, a lot of it is about actually designing it, right? So yeah, we went over the programming and now we're actually gonna start how it looks good. But today, just so that it's not that boring, we're gonna also continue to do a little bit of programming today. So if this works, I'm going to go to the screen share and you can see that, yeah, uh, we have the blank desktop. So this time we're gonna create a new project or start project one and actually like, you know, start making the website I showed in the slideshow. So just like the previous class, or the first class where, if you remember it, we created a folder and created some files. So here we're gonna create a folder by doing a right click new folder to create it on your desktop. I'm gonna name it dumb things, something like that, just name it dumb things. It doesn't really matter what you name it. Um, you can also do it if you're on Windows or Mac OS. Um, yeah, shift command shift in like that to create a new folder or control shift in. Yeah, you should get a new folder because, or if you want, you can uh, just delete the code you had in your previous files, it will work the same, but creating a new folder, right? You don't have to erase what you did the previous time, so you can use it for reference. But yeah, we can have this dumplings folder. And we can double click it to open it up in the file manager and you can see that it's empty. Right, uh, let us open Sublime Text, which I found out that on Windows, it will be on the start menu at the bottom of the screen or on Mac OS. If it's not on the dock right here, what you can do is go to the launch pad by you know, pinching your fingers, right? Going to the launch pad, clicking, finding your Sublime Text here. But I feel like four weeks into the lesson, I think you should probably know how to open this. But if you don't, 
there's always the saying the Q&A session after the class, which you can look at. And now you can see that we have our blank Sublime text page. If it shows up the previous class stuff, right? If it still shows the index.html and stuff from the previous class, you can just click the X, right? You can click the X mark on the tabs in the files to close it. But yeah, if you click it, yeah, Sublime Text doesn't have a new window. If you close all of it, you can do I'll go to the top file, open, which is Command O or Control O, or you know you can just click and open the new window. My computer is very slow today for some reason, but yeah, okay, great. You can see it shows up this thing for opening it up. Or if it just shows a default tab page, what you can do, you just you can just skip this step for now. But basically, you can go to your desktop folder, which is on the sidebar, or you can navigate it to it and open this folder up. And now you can see on the sidebar there's a dumpling thing. If you were on this this page originally, right? If you just had this the blank page without a new window, you can also do Command O on the file open, or what you can do is just create a new file like here by doing control or command N, depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac. And then you can just save the file. So command S or control S. And it will show it up. Now you can see that on the top there's a text field. It will change a little bit depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac, but it should be pretty similar. You can just type index.html these exact uh, words or letters. And one thing you have to be careful of, you can see that the location that it's trying to save it to is not the folder that you're in. Right here, if you save it, if you try to save it here, it will give you an error. But what you need to do is find the folder that you have created the folder in. So mine is on the desktop, which you should see on the sidebar. If it doesn't, you can also go into users, your name, you know, desktop. But basically find your folder, you can also search for it here. Or yeah, on Windows, I believe you can also do the searching. But essentially what you need to do is pick your correct folder. And then you have to press save. Again, if that was complicated or if you couldn't figure it out, we're just going to go over that later. And you can always ask for help in the previous uh, the class or the Q&A stuff later. But as you remember, we're going to save all the effort of typing out the starter code. And we're going to just type HTML these four letters and let it also complete all the code for us. So press tab. And you can see it gives you the basic template. And here for the title, we're just going to yeah, go between these brackets. We're just going to say a pretty descriptive name, dumb links recipe. That. And here we're just going to add one H1, right? So H1 tab, tab, it gives you complete the tag so you can just type it out. But, and yeah, by the way, you can do control delete or command delete to delete large chunks of text together without using, having to delete every single piece of text so you can just select it, you know, and then press delete and then control command Z to go back. But anyways, we have the tag. We're just going to do dumplings just like that. And then press save, which is Command S on Mac and Control S on Windows. If it shows up this thing, you can just click cancel because yeah, it's basically annoying you to buy it, but you don't need to pay any money to continue using it. Um, right. Now we have this file. What we can do is go to the dumplings folder, right? Double click to open it up again and double click on the index.html to open that up. Okay, it shows it up in the other window. I'm just gonna drag the window to the side and put it here. But yeah, it shows up the very basic website, kind of like what we did in class two. Now I'm not gonna do any more the HTML because we don't really have time. I'm gonna create a new file, which is a style.css file, which we also did last time. So it will be pretty similar. You just need to press Command N or Control N, and yeah, file or also new file here, and then you're gonna save it. So Control Command S.
And this time you can name it anything you want. You can name it hello.css or style.css, but it's preferred, I guess. It's good to name it style.css because it looks better. And yes, this is what I usually name the file. Now with the style.css, right? You it just has to end in CSS. And also to, yeah, make sure that it's still in the correct folder. If you select this folder, I believe it will now automatically be here. But if it's not, you still have to go back to however you found your folder and open it up. Again, if you need help, just join after the class and ask. Um, now we have the CSS file, which has nothing. I'm just going to type a quick CSS uh, code, H1, right? Selects this thing that we just wrote. And then the brackets, which is uh, on the top right corner of the keyboard, the angle brackets, and do color colon blue. And now you have to save the file. Great. Now, if you reload, it doesn't do anything as some of you might have expected because the browser doesn't know what like this file exists. What you have to do is link the file right here, right? Remember, you have to go to the HTML and do a link tag. Right, do link, or you can just press tab and let it complete for you. Bell style sheet basically tell and type basically says like what type of thing it is. It is a CSS file or a style sheet file. But what you need to know or focus on is this href, and you have to type the name of the website or not the name of the website. I mean the name of the CSS file, which in my case is called style.css. So now if you press save. And then you also have to go to this file and press save. And then go to the browser and click the reload button. And now you can see it's blue. Great, now we should have got all the HTML and CSS set up. We're not gonna do any more complicated stuff and we're gonna add on to it the next class. But for what I'm feeling that the main point of this is basically understanding like design and the different colors and the different you know, things that we need to choose because Obviously now it's also websites that we made look very, very ugly, but just trust me that it will, with a little bit of work, it can look a lot better than this. So yeah, we're gonna go on with that like the next class. And then, yeah, this is basically it for this class. I hope by making another website, you'll get a good review of how HTML works and how CSS works, and most importantly, how to design good and useful websites. Great. Um, I can stop sharing now. And yeah. Okay, there's a few more people asking a question. I'm just gonna answer how do you do the default code? Uh, okay, if you do, yeah, for the people that can't, um, don't have time, we the meeting might close in a few minutes, but yeah, you can join again, but I will just answer very really quickly. How do you do the default code again? First of all, if you really couldn't get it to work, I'll upload the video to the YouTube, but and you can just copy the code manually. But if you want to type the default code, all you have to do is type the words HTML, right? You just have to type HTML, these four letters and press tab twice. And it should auto like put all the code there. How do you name it? How do you name the file? Someone asked. Um, when you press save, there should be, um, yeah, right, when you press save the file, you can't name it when you create the file, but when you press save, there should be a thing for name of the file, a text input place. How do you put the file in the new folder? When it opens it up, you could have the, there should be like a selecting option, right? The same way you did for the previous one, or you can just put it in the desktop, the same, but, and then you have to remember the HTML file or, but yeah, you can select it. If you need more help, I can always be open after the uh, thing, doing the next thing uh, right after this class. But also someone else asked what editor software do I use? I use Sublime Text, uh, which is the one that I demonstrated how to install in the previous videos, which I uploaded on YouTube on the uh, organization's YouTube channel, I guess, and I use that. But just because you're curious, I also use a few more stuff like uh, Atoms, 
RAM VS Code. Nobody needs to know what those are, but if you do, that's what I use. Okay, I'm gonna end the meeting right now. And if you need to join, you can always rejoin to ask questions. All right, see you guys.